That is a great question, what is ethics? And we decided not to answer that question at all. We decided to let the filmmakers answer it for us. So what we said to them is, whatever you think ethics is, tell us about when you're having ethical conflicts in your work. There's a lot of ways you could, you could spend the rest of your life ta talking about how to define ethics philosophically. We know that generally speaking, it's doing the right thing. It's feeling responsible, that you've been acting responsibly, and you know it when there is a feeling of uh-oh, or I'm guilty, or maybe I shouldn't have done that. I mean, in the most simple sense. And that is what the filmmakers then fed back to us. They said, well, you know, here's when I freely asked myself, had we done the right thing? For social media, one of the things we do is to create documents out of research that help people make media that matters. So one of the things that really was tremendously successful was creating a code of best practices, actually a suite of codes of best practices around fair use, which in the U.S. is being able to use copyrighted material without paying for it under some circumstances, and Canada it's fair dealing. This was tremendously helpful for filmmakers, and it came out of their own experience and our research about their problems. They came back to us again and again and said, what we really need is a code of ethics. There are so many problems in the field. And we said, well, we're not going to write a code of ethics. Who are we? Um, what we need to know before we would decide to do anything is what are the problems in the field? What does the field itself believe are problems that they face? And so that was the very simple motivation for our report, which is called Honest Truths. The biggest problem that we identified in this report was that people have not articulated publicly and shared their common values and what they think is the right thing to do when values come into conflict. And so while people do have, in fact, a lot of shared values throughout the field doing different kinds of work, they haven't really talked about what they expect of themselves. And therefore, they basically blame other people when they have a problem. They say, oh, Discovery made me do it. Those bad people at Discovery told me I have to make a movie really quickly. Or they'll say, the film made me do it. I need art, and art required that I do this to the, to the, um, uh, to the subject, or that I uh, alter the archival footage in this way and thus betray the viewer. I had to do it. Whereas in, if you understood clearly what your principles were, and what other people do when those principles come into conflict, you would be able to own your own responsibility better. You know, people will pick up on different aspects of this, but something that I find consistently not only irritating but alarming is the use of uh, inappropriate archival footage, of having people use one thing to substitute for another. And because they could find it in somebody else's film and they didn't have to archivally research it because they, you know, that dam looks like another dam, so what the heck? Um, or even doing things like filmmakers told us, which is, well, there were no pictures of this person's childhood, so I went to a flea market and bought some old family photographs and said that that was that person's childhood. I can see this kind of archival misuse of historical footage in most films about history that I watch. And I believe that it's a defamation of history. Now, I'm, I'm actually trained as a historian, so I'm particularly and acutely aware of that. Uh, something that I think is much harder to see in the film itself is what the filmmaker decided not to tell you about the characters that they're covering, that they're talking to you about. Where Inevitably, a filmmaker must make a decision that, that excludes a bunch of material as well as including it. Why but frequent. Uh, no, actually, the, it was really important in our, uh, in our report that we guarantee everybody anonymity. A number of people decided not to take it. Uh, but the people who told the stories that were perhaps most disturbing understandably did not want to be associated with those stories. We do know that, for instance, there's really well established on record that Michael Moore has altered sequences of events. That's another thing that matters a lot. It matters whether one thing came before another because it's associated with causation. So 
I think that he's not the only one to do that. Many people alter the chronology because it's inconvenient for the story they want to tell. This is, a, frankly, it's a breach of trust with the viewer. The viewer is expecting in a documentary that you tell them what really happened. They know it's your version of what happened. They know it's your perspective. But they don't think that you are going to give them stuff that didn't happen or that happened in a totally different way from what you said. There's a big problem with accountability. And partly that's because filmmakers are often contracted as independent contractors to make films under terms that they don't get to choose. So they often make films on their own and then sell them at the end. So the f they're not working with organizations that historically were at a network, for instance, might have asked them to abide by certain standards and practices. So they're cut free of those lines of accountability. They don't have any consensus in their field, so they can't go back to their field and say, what is a responsible documentary film? Maker do because they've never had the conversation until now. The, the solution that makes sense to me is not that anybody else tells documentary filmmakers what ethics are and what they should do, but that the field establish best practices, which they can do. That is exactly what happened in the Code of Best Practices in Fair Use, is that the fields in question, which were filmmakers, uh, media literacy people, people who make online video, people who ha are archivists of dance collections, and scholars, all of those people decided to get together and have real conversations in a delimited way about what they thought should happen. And that can happen in the docu documentary, not documentarians have organizations. They have national organizations. They, um, they have annual conferences. They have lots of places where people get together and they can have some serious talks, but they would have to want to. Right now what happens is two things. Those filmmakers, when a problem occurs and it becomes public, all the other filmmakers jump on the one guy who did something bad and say, I would never do that. And the other thing is that people don't talk about the problems that they have in public because they're worried about losing their jobs, their, their contracts, their reputations, and so on. I, I think that there's no point at which it's not a good thing to have a discussion about ethics. And the sooner you can have a discussion about the ethics of media, the sooner the better off everybody is. And I think that young people are acutely aware of the ways in which they are poorly treated by their own media and the way in which media lie. And they spend a lot of time talking to each other about distortions that they see. So, and I think that that is a great time to ask people to think about the distortions that they inevitably will enter into the story when they tell a story and to ask them how they're going to come to terms with it. Filmmakers in our, re in our report basically focused on two things. What is my relationship with my subject? And when I have a good faith relationship, when I'm not doing a gotcha interview, but I actually am trying to maintain good faith with this subject, how do I maintain good faith as I develop a story that might not be their story? That's one big set of issues. And, and nobody, including anybody who writes a code of best practices, is ever going to give you the template for how to resolve that. What you're always going to have to do is go back to the principles, which are basically, I want to have good faith with the people I'm telling this story about when you want that and ask yourself how in this circumstance you will maintain it. The other area that's terrifically important for our filmmakers that we interviewed is how do I maintain good faith with the viewer knowing that the viewer gave me a special trust that they do not give to other films. They came to me with a special trust that said you're promising to tell me something something important about something that really happened. And I, you, you, you as a filmmaker have to figure out how to honor that trust, given that everything you do will also be not uh, a pure window into reality, but a portrayal of it. You will have to make a million little decisions that alter that reality while you maintain that faith with that viewer. And you'll have to ask yourself on a daily basis, what's enough.